Gary is in an interesting spot. He was a very loved guy who, like so many, puts up the persona of, I don't care. And I don't care is a very effective strategy. But so many that put that off stronger, for whatever reason, whatever the psychology on this is, are the ones that really care. And Gary has never been turned on. He has never had a press conference not go his way. He's never had the media not getting up his ass and wanting interviews. He's never had the fans give him a hard time. He's never had the fighters give him a hard time, right? It's, it's one of these spots where you can pretend like I don't care about the other side, but the other, what you don't know about yourself is you've never experienced the other side. You've never experienced those boos. You never experienced the negativity or the rejection or what the kids call the haters. Now, it would seem as though there's cracks in the armor. It would seem as though. Whatever you guys said to Gary on Twitter, it was enough and he was connected to it enough, he disabled it. He didn't disable it so you couldn't hear what he had to say. He wasn't disciplined enough to go and put his message, hit send, and put the phone down. He just wasn't. He was interested in what you had to say. Whatever you had to say, it wasn't nice. And it got to him. The guy that believed he didn't care turned out he did. Now, what does that mean and how does it affect the fight, right? Like, I, I'm not here to give Gary a hard time. It's, it's not at all. It's important that we look at it for what it is. I used to do this. The one thing about my fight, I, was, I, wor I worked on it. I didn't ignore it. I worked on it was the mental side. And before fights, I would, I would really clearly identify in my room what I was dealing with. The odds that were against me, the projections that were against me, the organization that does not believe I'm going to win, and they're the ones that book the match. I'm throwing a few fights in here together. But having an injury, having no camp and taking it on short notice, all of these different things that I just combined. But I, I sit in my room and go, okay, this is the hardest. This is the most unlikely. This is the, uh, the most pressure. This is the, the lack of confidence of others, the most I've ever said. If I can get through this, I can get through anything. If I can get through this fight, if I'm presented with this characteristic in the future of pressure, of short notice, whatever, whatever it might have been, that won't bother me in the future. That won't get to me. It won't win. If I can beat it here I can beat it for life. And I would just kind of keep track of small things like this. So what I'm sharing for you is to identify ahead of time with Gary what specifically he's up against, which is a lot. There is a courage and a vulnerability to walking out in front of 15,000 people with cameras being broadcast around the world in that outfit. How many people, it would, it, would, it would turn them off from going and doing their job if they had to do it in shorts with little gloves and a mouthpiece. That's all that you had. That's all the protection that you had. Would you go to your job tomorrow if that's what you had to do it in? If you had to do your job tomorrow in that and it was filmed around the world, would you go to your job? I mean, not, not for nothing. It takes a lot. And that's before we get into the rules. That's before we get into the train killer across from you whose number one encouragement per the decision makers is damage. The number one thing that will be looked at, the number one criteria, the number one goal is that trained killer is going to damage you. Tough stakes. Tough stakes where you would want as many things in order to create an environment and provide the most likely positive opportunity for yourself. And there's just some stuff I don't know. Like as I ask it, I want to disclose it. I'm not kicking Gary. I would never kick a man when he's down, but I am observing it because if he passes this with flying colors, I mean, just on a personal note, it will remind me of the quiet time that I had in my hotel room back in my own career where I would begin to objectively assess from a mental standpoint what was bothering me, what was challenging me, what was in front of me, something along these lines. And I do not believe that Gary will 
from a public swaying standpoint ever be in a fight like this? And therefore, if he overcomes this or even performs above his grade, we will learn something significant about him and he will have something significant to be very proud of. So, and when I talk about the sway of the public, right, he, he went from up here where people couldn't wait. He was, he was getting more signups on social media than anybody. Just to use one quantifiable number, he was getting more followers than anybody else that you'll see fighting next Saturday. More per day, per week, per month, per year, any way that you wanted to do it. People were flocking to him more than they were anybody else you're going to see fighting next Saturday. They're now at zero. So that sway of the most sought after to zero, they're gone. He blocked them all. I don't think it's likely anywhere else in his career he will have a sway like that and then need to go and perform. I also just cannot find out for the life of me, and it's a big deal what Jimmy's at. Now, I believe that he's training somewhere, but it is really a surprise. I mean, you have to understand what that's like. If Gary comes to a gym and he tells me, hey, I'm coming to your gym, do not put anything out. It's a prerequisite to me come to it. Do not, nothing. No photos, no mention. Let's keep this. To First off, why? Why would that possibly be a secret? And second, why would anybody listen to him? I mean, I can tell you, I stayed at the same gym my entire life and we couldn't keep a secret. You got your friends in there that have a loyalty to you who if they don't do what you at, you could turn it right back on them three months later when they're going to fight them. I mean, it's one of these things where you, if anyone's going to do it for, it's this base and this team where you're actually a member. How could Gary, who's going to set foot in a gym for the first time, is only going to stay there for a number of weeks and he's going to be off to the next time I mean, right, when he's got that kind of reputation. Why would they possibly do him those favors? I don't suggest for you that he would even ask for that, but if he did, I don't think it's likely to believe that they would honor it, but somebody has. There is no training footage. There is no videos. There is no stories. There is no statements. We do not know what Jim he will represent when Bruce Buffer calls it off. We do not know who the head corner will be. Is it a garage situation? According to Sean Strickland, he lives with one of his trainers. Are they in the garage? Are they locked down like it's COVID? I mean, I'm asking these questions because he's almost a four to one favorite. Next to Rukmanov, Ian Gary is the strongest favorite on the entire main card. I mean, you guys have been screaming that you think Patty the Batty is going to run right through Tony Ferguson. You've been screaming that. But Tony's odds are tighter than Gary versus Luke. Luke, who's ranked ahead of Gary, it's an interesting thing. And I don't know who's going to win that fight, but I do know history. And I can tell you one thing. I just tell you one thing, but it's true. Think on it all you want. Fire back at me if you've got an example that goes against what I'm going to tell you. But we have seen two guys from the same gym fight before. What we have never seen, right? So people at that gym know who's going to win that fight or who generally wins when they train. The coaches know who's going to win that fight or who generally won when they train. The fighters themselves know who's going to win or who generally won when they train. They know that. And... Nowhere in history where we have seen two fighters from the same gym match up. No, nowhere, zero in history have we ever seen the guy that generally wins. The guy who's expected to win. The guy on a more regular basis who did win. Nowhere in history has he been the one to leave. Never. The coaches themselves, from a business standpoint, would rather have a younger guy with more shelf life. That is who they would stand behind. Like it or not, they got to roll with Gary. He's 25 and he's undefeated. They got it. He, he, he wasn't ranked at all. He came to number 15. Now he's number 10. Like his path and his chart looks a lot better than Luke's. That's the guy you got to roll with. But they didn't. Yet the betters are convinced that not only does Gary win, that he dominates. And it's an interesting stat. It's something 
to think about.